Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. We have been looking forward to today's show because it's our favorite guest, you, your questions, our answers on Ask the Guys, today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Stop for a moment. Why are you listening to this show? Are you dreaming of a bigger, brighter financial future? More personal freedom to live life on your own terms? What if there was just one skill that could make it happen? There is. Sales. Robert Kiyosaki says every entrepreneur must be good at sales. It's true for investors too. Sales is how you attract money, people, and opportunities. Sales is the skill used to negotiate deals and lead your team. Sales skills are essential to success. The good news is it's a learnable skill. The great news is we've created a two-day interactive workshop to teach those skills to you. Make plans today to attend How to Win Funds and Influence People, Mastering the Art of Financial Selling. For dates and details, send an email to sales at realestateguysradio.com or visit realestateguysradio.com and look under events. Gain the skills you need to succeed. Email sales at realestateguysradio.com or look under the events tab at realestateguysradio.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio show. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, co-host financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. One of our favorite things is when listeners send us email and we get all kinds of questions. I remember back in the day when we started, we'd be lucky to get a question a month. And today, virtually every single day, we get questions from listeners. Yeah, we do. And it's great because, you know, we talk about a lot of things on this show. We, we talk very high-level stuff. <laughs> And then, uh, and then we talk about, you know, real tactical stuff. But to keep it real, it really has to come from the real world. So we love it when the listeners send in their questions because now these are things that are happening that real people in the real world are coming across and having questions about. And so uh, keep them coming. We appreciate them. We do our best to answer as many as we can. And uh, it's always good to have a big collection in the grab bag to pull from. Yeah, and if you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, all you do is go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click Ask the Guys. Here are our only disclaimers. We do not give advice. We give ideas and information. Advice comes from professionals. So if you hear something on today's show and you want to take action, talk to your professional about that. We are neither attorneys or tax advisors. With that, let's go. Question number one comes from Miles in Atlanta, Georgia. Love your guys' show. I'm a new listener and already hooked. I'm 22 years old, currently working for a national home builder doing land development. So my wheels started turning at the thought of investing in property. My problem is that I'm a recent college graduate and I want to get started investing in real estate, but don't have a lot of capital. Do you guys have an idea of where I should start in regards to getting my feet wet, digging into the real estate market and acquiring my first piece of investment property? Well, before we answer that, it is a great question, Miles, and we're going to answer it. We have another question from a similar listener. Jose in Mesa, Arizona says, I'm 23 years old, recently started listening to your podcast, and I've gained a lot of insight. I've been studying real estate on my own for about a half a year now. I really have no cash to start with. I'm in the process of saving as I understand I need some skin in the game to seriously be considered. But until then, I was wondering if there's anything I can be doing to gain real life experience. Also, do you think a syndication would be a good route for me? Thank you. Looking forward to your response. Well, the reason I lumped these together, a couple of young guys looking to get started, enthusiastic about real estate, but not a lot of capital. And this is a very common situation. Yeah, I think the thing to everybody needs to really realize is that there's a lot more to currency, if you will. When you go into the marketplace to trade, you're trading in currency. We always think of currency in terms of dollars. Right. But you have other currencies available to you. You have relationships, you have opportunities, you have knowledge. And so you can can begin to build up these accounts, if you will, of relationships, knowledge, opportunities, and then you can trade those for people who have the dollars that you need in order to get involved in the deal. That's really what syndication at its core is all about, is taking what you have and getting what you need. And what you have right now is you have time, you have intellect, you have ambition. In some cases, Miles is in an environment where he has the potential to be in a network and form relationships and discover opportunities. You're active in a marketplace, maybe where you can gain market knowledge, wisdom. You're listening to shows like ours and picking up insights that maybe other people who are more affluent, higher earners, but busy working don't have. And so you can bring ideas and perspectives to them that they don't have and then show them how they can implement those ideas and perspectives through your hustle. So you have a lot to work with, a lot more than you think you do. And it's great that you're reaching out because that's the first step. You have always have to ask for help when you need it. Yesterday, you and I sat down with an amazing young guy who 
who's the, just like one of these guys. He's eager, he's anxious, got a lot of skills, not a lot of money. So what do you do with that? Well, you find guys like us that have a lot of money and not a lot of time to go do stuff, right? We, I mean, we're out there doing all kinds of deals and what we need is help. I'm not recruiting. We're not asking for help and no, we don't have an opening. But guys like us who are out there in the marketplace, you know what we need? We need ideas. We need someone to come up and say, hey, did you hear that article on such and such or forward an article or hey, I just read this or I heard this on a podcast because we're listening to stuff, but we can listen to it all. Well, it's interesting that you say that. We So we have this guy that I could call our Puerto Rican correspondent who's really been valuable lately since everything's happened because because he has been feeding me information from boots on the ground. He sends me these emails regularly, Jorge, and he sends me these emails and he tells me what's going on. Now, I don't always have the time to respond. I don't always read them right away, but I know that I've got this collection of data that's coming from this marketplace that I'm interested in watching. And when you're getting it from boots on the ground, it is fresher, it is more relevant uh, than maybe what you're reading in the headlines. And so I can compare the two. What's readily available online is great, but when you get boots on the ground, it, it's it's really nice. So again, this is a guy that is is young and he's building a relationship with us by just feeding us items of value and he keeps it coming even when I don't even give him the courtesy of a reply. And I've let him know, hey, don't take it personally. I get a zillion emails. And uh, so I really appreciate that. It's a great way to begin to build a relationship. Find a way to add value. And here's the thing. Nobody expects a 22 or 23-year-old to come in with two or $300,000. I mean, it happens, but we're not expecting that. And so don't be apologetic for the fact that you don't have a lot of money in your early 20s. Instead, go out and get a lot of ideas, a lot of education, and be a connector. So now let's just bring it down to kind of a practical, tactical level. If you're out there and you're in the marketplace and you're looking for deals, what you're really looking for is problems. You're looking for somebody that's got a problem. You might find an old dilapidated house where the owner is equity rich, but cash flow poor. And you have the opportunity perhaps to partner with them. It's like, hey, I don't have any money. I can't fix this thing up. If it were fixed up, I would be able to do a deal. Maybe what you have is a good credit score and some documentable income. You have the ability to borrow. You can work out a deal where the owner is actually your partner. And you do the work and fix up the property. You pr- supply the hustle. Maybe you supply some of the financing. You go do whatever needs to be done. And then you split the profit. So that, you know, it's, it's one thing to say, oh, you know, relationships and information and all that stuff. And that's all important. You got to do that stuff. That's kind of higher level. But it is possible to go out in the real world and go find real deals when you find problems that people have and they have resources that they can use that they don't quite know how to use because something's missing and you bring it in, whether it's the ability to get a loan, credit, they don't have the time or the expertise to do the work, they can't see the opportunity in the problem because they're too close to it. So those are the types of things you can go out and do practically right away. You know, a couple times you've mentioned hustle, and this is something that you can bring to a relationship that people appreciate. Many years ago, I met a gal who was very excited about real estate. She'd been coming to our classes and she'd really refined with exactly the niche she wanted to do, which was acquiring small multi-unit properties and fixing them up. And she was in a marketplace where that made a lot of sense and she had a lot going for her but she didn't have a lot of capital. So we partnered together. I supplied the capital, she supplied the hustle, and we split the returns. And it was great, it gave me more deals, it gave me more insight into the marketplace, and I didn't spend a ton of time. When she needed help, she came and asked. When there was a quandary, we'd sit down and talk about it. But I wasn't out there at the property painting and hammering and nailing, and actually she wasn't either. She hired all of those folks, and I would help vet the team. But I sat back and it was basically capital infusion from my side and hustle from her side. And she made more than money because she got the benefit of your tutelage. You were mentoring her and you weren't charging her for that. You know, we we have a mentoring program. We charge people to mentor them, at least in syndication. So it's another benefit you can get out of the deal just by bringing your hustle and trading, again, the currency of your hustle for what someone else can bring, their wisdom, their connections, their capital. Now, the one unique part of Jose's questions, he says, do you think a syndication would be a good route for me? And let's just talk about that for a minute. Two sides of that. A syndication as far as becoming a passive investor in one can be a great way to learn about real estate without having to know everything, but it does take some capital. On the other hand, syndicating is kind of hard to do if you don't have any capital. So I think syndication is a ultimately a great destination to be, and obviously that's something that we have
have a lot of heart for and teach, but I don't know that you can start syndicating with very little money. Well, maybe not a sophisticated syndication, but a lot of the things we've been talking about, equity shares with owner carrybacks and and uh, small syndications like the deal that you just described with the young lady that came in and did the deal, that was basically a syndication. It's just a partnership. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It's got to be legal. You have to make sure you're well advised, but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be super fancy and super expensive to do. You can start small and you know you may not make a lot of money you make a little bit of money but what you'll do is you'll build relationships gain experience and then put yourself in a position where you will be able to go out and do bigger deals based on the strength of your resume and relationships so i wanted to start with those couple of questions because i know we get this question a lot young listeners that are enthusiastic excited they got starry eyes and they don't have a lot of money well welcome to real estate that's how it works none of us started with a lot of money we started with a lot of hustle a lot of desire and we figured out how to connect the dots i'm going to say one last thing on this because it's my theme in the syndication seminar and it's true in anything you do. The one thing that you can always do right away every day is build your brand, your reputation, and build your network, your relationships. If you do that, if you build a strong brand and people think highly of you and you build a good network of the right people, you'll have all kinds of resources at your disposal that you can draw upon to solve the problems that you find in the marketplace and convert them to opportunities. It's Ask the Guys, your questions are answers. This one comes from Sid in Daphne, Alabama. Hello, real estate guys. I'm a 38-year-old business owner, father and husband living near Mobile, Alabama. I started listening to your podcast six or seven years ago, and you really started to get me thinking, and I've opened my mind to all of the possibilities out there to make money. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, as well as many other investment books. I invite friends and family over to play cash flow, and the combination has changed my life. I established my investment philosophy, like you guys say all the time, which is to buy value-add properties for cash flow, not so much for equity. I found a good realtor who was also an investor and in 2012 purchased my first single family home. I purchased another a year later and in 2015 I purchased a fiveplex so now I have seven doors and my cash flow is approximately $1,000 to $1,500 a month depending on repairs and other expenses. Last year I heard you interview Brad Sumrock and I attended one of his events and was convinced that multifamily is the way that I want to scale up and achieve my goal of becoming financially independent. However, I've had no luck in the past 18 months finding a property. I've bid on three or four that I've lost, either I was too late or too slow. Now I'm starting to question whether or not the market is right for investing in multifamily in my area. Everything seems to move super quick or for much more than I feel reasonable for the property and able to cash flow. So now I'm thinking that instead I may want to look for a location for my landscaping company in lieu of investing in a multifamily location. I think they will both take the same cash outlay and overall investment. How do I decide which is the best option to pursue? Thank you so much for reading this long-winded question. Well, it is a great question. And uh, one of the things that's happening right now in the marketplace and has been for some time in all marketplaces is multifamily is super, super competitive. Hard to find deals that work, hard to get a deal. And what often happens is people overbid to get the deal. And this is something you've got to be really careful about. Yeah, you do. So, you know, the idea is, am I in the right space? Well, I think all the activity is telling you you're in the right space. The problem is, to your point, Robert, it's it's a little bit picked over. Right. And so, yeah, you have to really be quick. You have to be able to price right. You got to be able to do your underwriting very precisely. And it's easy to get caught up in the momentum and overpay. And then you end up with a problem. And in today's environment where interest rates are so low, you don't necessarily have the opportunity to have lower interest rates bail you out of an overbid uh, down the road. You know, I think what you're talking about doing, Sid, is looking off the beaten path and seeing if you can find something that serves a greater need than just a financial return. You've got a landscaping business. If there's a way for you to uh, take rent maybe and convert it into equity or maybe buy a building bigger than you need and create some tenants that can be adjacent to you, this is something that gives you value. It's a very niche type thing, and it isn't going to be as crowded a space because it's unique to you and your circumstances. And this is one of the beautiful, beautiful things about real estate. When big money moves into a space, they move into a category like multifamily and they move into markets and that's fine. But there are so many inefficiencies and so many nuances in the real estate space. You can find one-off deals that meet your unique set of needs. And then if you are careful with your numbers and you really have a strategic plan, you can find a way to have that make good business sense for you. So it sounds like you're kind of on the right track. Again, don't know all the details, 
But I think the idea of trying to get off the beaten path and find a niche where you can find some space uh, and develop yourself is probably a pretty good idea. Absolutely. It is harder than ever to get in the multifamily, especially if you're in that smaller size product. So don't be discouraged. I'd keep looking. At the same time, here's a practical idea when it comes to investing, if you will, in a property that your business is going to occupy. Make sure those are two completely different things. You're going to buy the building in, say, an entity of some sort, and that's going to be a business, if you will, an ownership of a commercial property that's going to be leased, then you're going to have your landscaping business. And the reason you want to do that is now you have more flexibility. You might decide at some point, I want to sell my landscaping business, but I'm going to keep the building it's in because I've just nurtured and created a great tenant. You might decide the other way, hey, I've got some great real estate opportunity. I am a great tenant. I could sell this building as a triple net lease, get that cash, and move into something else. So if you are going to look at that, that is definitely a way to make sure that you've got more flexibility moving forward. And you, one other thing about keeping them separate is, you know, again, we don't give legal advice, but you probably want to keep the business separate from a legal standpoint from the ownership of the building. Keep those two in different entities. Talk to your attorney. Seven units in five years. Congratulations, Sid. You're on a great track and uh, keep it up. It's Ask the Guys Today. Your questions, our answers. If you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click Ask the Guys. More questions coming up. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2018 Goals Retreat, January 5th to 7th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend event has been called Phenomenal inspirational, and life-changing by the hundreds of people that have attended. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com and click events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2018 Goals Retreat on the first weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Hi, this is Patrick Donahoe, CEO of Paradigm Life. Wall Street and banks spend billions of dollars per year in advertising with the goal to convince you that they are the solution. But take a look around. None of their advice has worked. If you're listening to this, odds are pretty good that you're already a real estate investor, or at least becoming one. So why do you do it? Is it to hedge inflation, the tax benefits, or maybe it's to get your money away from Wall Street? It's because of these benefits and so many more that I created the Real Estate Investor's Guide to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy. When you combine successful real estate investing with the Perpetual Wealth Strategy, you have the recipe for what has helped the wealthy to establish their financial well-being for decades. You can download the Real Estate Investor's Guide to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy today by clicking the Resources tab on the Real Estate Guys Radio homepage. Don't wait. Go download it now. Hello, this is Robert Kiyosaki. I'm the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And if you're serious about learning how to invest in real estate, listen to the real estate guys. They really know what they're talking about. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Lots of great places to come hang out with the real estate guys. Go to our website at realestateguysradio.com and click events. You'll see some of the events that we do, like our upcoming goals retreat and, of course, our secrets of successful syndication. But you'll also find a lot of places that the real estate guys are going to be hanging out. So come out to a live event and hang out with the real estate guys. It's Ask the Guys today. Your questions are answers. We like to do this every six to eight weeks. This question comes from Rob in Circleville, Ohio. You know, this may be our first question from Circleville. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he says, hey, what's the real estate mock game that you reference on your show and recommend playing? 
Well, that's a good and short question, and we just talked about it a little bit earlier. Monopoly is a great game. That's yes. a great mock real estate game, and it really is a great game. The thing I don't like mon about Monopoly, even though I've played it forever since I was young, I think, you know, Brian Tracy talks about if you look back at whatever you had interest in between ages of 7 and 14, it tells you what you should be doing. My favorite thing at that age was to play Monopoly, so go figure. But in Monopoly, there's one winner and everybody else loses. If you play the game all the way to the end, right, somebody gets everything, and that's not really how real estate works. So the game we like to recommend playing is not a real estate game necessarily, but a financial game, and it's called Cash Flow 101. It was uh, vetted and developed by Robert and Kim Kiyosaki. Yeah, it's fabulous. We have so many stories of people whose lives have been changed because what Robert's basic thesis is, is that you discover a lot about yourself and your emotional makeup when you play a game. Um, you you aren't necessarily thinking as deeply. You're playing. You're reacting. You find yourself uh, getting excited or being frustrated or getting confused. And if you will take the time when you have those reactions to dig in and find out what's going on, you begin to transform. So a lot of education, true education, effective education, is not just about information. It's about transformation. And the cash flow game, uh, just like doing real life deals, is putting you through a process where you're kind of drag through an emotional and mental roller coaster and your reactions and the things you go through and the strengths you develop and the weaknesses that are exposed that you can begin to work on uh, are all part of the process. So it's a lot more than just entertainment. It really is a transformational game of learning how to make decisions and take risks and be calculated, but also be intuitive. It's it's a lot of fun. Every year on our Investor Summit, we always have a big old game of cash flow with lots of different boards going, and that's a ton of fun. Uh, very often we have a Rich Dad advisor or two in the audience, so that's also kind of cool when you're playing that game, but uh, check it out for sure, Cash Flow 101. Our next question comes from Jim in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Guys, your site and your podcast are an inspiration and a great source of knowledge. Well, thank you, sir. The next course of Raising Capital on syndication is not until March. What would you recommend I do to learn as much as possible in the interim? I want to do the Residential Assisted Living Program now, so I need to learn how to raise money. Please advise and keep the content coming. All right, Jim. Well, first of all, our course, The Secrets of Successful Syndication, happens twice a year. And you're right, the next one's in March. But that doesn't mean you have to wait. There's lots of things that you can be doing to start learning about syndication. There's a great book. Well, there's a book. I can't say it's a great book. It's it's a well-written book. It's a ton of information, but it is a textbook written by our good friend Sam Freshman called The Principles of Real Estate Syndication, and that is a great way to learn the nuts and bolts of syndication. And my only hesitancy, and the reason I'm couching it the way I am, is that it is a little bit of a dry textbook type of read. It's not a motivational book, but if you're looking for nuts and bolts, uh, that's it is literally the book on real estate syndication. Now, having said that, I think there's a lot of things you can be doing. If you're looking at building a business in residential assisted living, it's not just about raising the money. There's so much to learn and network, and there's a ton you can be doing right now before the class in March. Well, I do think specific to raising money, which is really what the essence of syndication is, and I would take it further than just raising money. Uh, really, what syndication is, is the entrepreneurial version, truly entrepreneurial version of real estate. And an entrepreneur goes goes out into the marketplace and finds a problem that they can solve. And they flip that problem over into an opportunity. And that opportunity is going to take an organization. You're going to have to organize resources. Part of that's money, part of that's people, part of that's ideas. It's just a lot of different things you got to organize. But syndication, like anything else, is a culture and a language. And if you can think about growing up, how you learned your native culture and your native language, you didn't learn it reading a book. You learned it by being in an environment. And so I think probably the single most most important thing anybody could do who wants to master anything new is to get in an environment where people who are already doing what you're doing are. Now, you have to find a way to earn your right to be in the room, right? It could be you pay tuition. It could be that you uh, donate time, you hustle, you help, you volunteer. It could be you provide some service. Uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, the young lady that wanted to do a deal, you ended up mentoring her. She right. learned from you because she brought to you something you needed. Hey, I've got more money than time, and I'm interested in doing deals. If you can bring me hustle, and I can direct my expertise through you to get something I would do if done, if I had the time to do it, 
if you're that person to an active syndicator. So look around in your world and ask yourself, can I, do I find anybody? Do I see anybody who is doing syndication? You know, if you've been to Gene Garino's training, you probably met some people. When you meet those people, you know, you exchange and you say, hey, I'd, I'd love to learn. Is there anything I can do to help you? You don't even have to be that smart about what it is. Let them tell you, well, you could do market research for me. You could crunch numbers for me. You could help me put together a spreadsheet. You know, you might think about what you bring to the party. Maybe you're a good writer. Maybe you're good at math and you know how to put together a financial analysis. Maybe you can help with a website. Maybe you could do some social media. I mean, anything to get into a relationship with somebody that's active in the space so you can begin to learn the language and learn the culture. That's probably the single most important thing you could do. Having coached a lot of folks about syndication, I think one of the core skill sets that is often missing and one of the big success factors is learning how to talk to people one-on-one about money. This is not something we learned in school. This is not something that most people do. And having the ability to get in a conversation with someone at a meaningful level and start to find out about them. And that's what syndication business is about. It's never about you and what you want. It's about helping enough other people get what they want, in the words of Zig Ziglar. And you are going to be constantly getting in conversations with people and talking about where they're investing their money. So two things about that. Number one, learn the language, not just of syndication, but of investing. Because here's the premise. When someone puts $100,000 into your syndication, it's not just sitting in the bank most of the time. It's in another investment vehicle. It's in the market. It's in equities. It's somewhere. And you need to know that language so they can do the compared to what when they're looking at your deal. Number two, you just need to get really comfortable with asking the right questions and understanding their financial position. There's no better way to do that than to come to Russ Gray's course called How to Win Funds and Influence People. It's right around the corner in November, and it only happens once a year. I will tell you this. If you wait and come to the syndication class in March, you're going to wish that you had the How to Win Funds and Influence People class right around the corner, and you won't. I would take it first. It's the next thing on our calendar. And guess who's in the room? all kinds of successful syndicators. So little self-promotion there, but I can do it because I don't do much more than MC that event. It's all Russell Gray, but it's one of the core concepts you need to understand and a skill set you need, which is developing the ability to talk to people about money and about their finances. Well, I mean, you know, growing up, your parents usually, uh, my parents taught me, you don't talk to people about money. Right. And you don't, you don't talk about your money to people and you don't ask them about their money. And so when, you, when you're in the business of syndication, you definitely are doing that. You, you have, have to, to find a way to do that and open up what I call the heart, get people to tell you what they're missing, what they need, what they want, what they desire, what their goals and objectives are. And when you find that somebody's in a situation where they're not yet where they want to go, then their problem of getting from point A to point B, you make that your problem and you try to help them any way you can. And that's how you begin to add value to the relationship, build your brand in that person's eyes. And ultimately, you're able at some point in the future to bring to them an opportunity, an offering, if you will, to help them solve their problem. And that becomes the genesis of a syndication business. The, the One other thing I'll say just real quickly is we've certainly talked about a ton of things uh, over the many years uh, on this radio show. And if you were to go to our website, which I recommend you do at realestateguysradio.com and, and hit the search box, just put in the word syndication and you'll find several episodes and listen to those episodes. And you could probably put in sales, and I think we've done one or two episodes on that topic as well, and you can listen to those episodes. So there's a lot of great, great content just on our website in, in our archives. And, uh, you know, to, to your point, Robert, I think it makes a lot of sense. I listen to a lot of financial podcasts, and a lot of them, most of them have nothing to do with real estate because I'm in the real estate space. I've been around the real estate space for a very, very long time. It's a language I know. It's a culture I understand. What I'm trying to do is understand how to communicate with people who have their money in other places. Why would somebody want to be in the stock market? Why would somebody want to move from there to here? Why why would somebody be, be in gold? Why would somebody be in bonds? Why would somebody be in oil? Trying to understand what they're thinking and what the dangers are and what the opportunities are and what the ROIs are versus what is available in real estate so that when we're talking we have a way to build a common bond. They have something they're in that they understand. And then I have the thing that I'm doing that I understand. And if I can understand what they understand, I can stand on that common ground of understanding and then expand that circle of understanding by sharing with them things that I know about my space that they don't know, but relating it in a way that it it communicates to them in a way they understand. One of my favorite things, you talk about the Bible, 
in the Bible, Jesus comes to earth, a God in the flesh, and his mission is to tell uh, these, these fairly unsophisticated people about the kingdom of God. And so you can imagine the communication challenge that is, right? right? You know, how do you... Kind of a big topic. How are you going to... There's no telescopes. There's They have no concept of the cosmos. They have all these ideas about the way things work. And this isn't meant to be religious. It doesn't... This is about communication. Yeah. So he finds these, these shepherds and he says, oh, you're a shepherd. Well, I'm the good shepherd. You're my sheep. You hear my voice. Oh, you're a fisherman. Well, follow me. I'll make you a fisher of men. Oh, you're a farmer. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And so in other words, he would find what they understood. And then he would explain to them what he was trying to tell them in a language that they understood. And that's really my my point about expanding your mind and, and learning to, to speak the language that your prospects are thinking about and what they're focused on. So even though you might be super interested in real estate and you visit all these niche sites, make sure you're going to the mainstream financial websites and reading mainstream financial news because that's what most of your prospects are reading. And then you can meet them there and then move them from that space over to your space by comparing what you're doing to what they're doing. I do this all the time. It works like a charm, but it does take a little bit of time to learn the language. Now, here's an idea to save some money. The Secrets of Successful Syndication is coming up on March 2nd and 3rd in Dallas, and it's not yet open for registration. But what you can do is if you go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click events, you'll see all the events that we do. And when you see Secrets of Successful Syndication, you can sign up for the advanced notice list. Now, here's how that saves you money. You'll be the first to hear when the window is open, the ticket window is open, so you can go reserve, and that gets you the absolute lowest super early bird price. So if you want to save some money on the event and you're serious about coming, then uh, definitely Definitely do that, and we'll see you there, Jim. Hey, it's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. When we come back, we're going to ask you a question for Real Estate Trivia. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. This portion of the Real Estate Guys radio program is brought to you by International Coffee Farms, where you can own a parcel of land in your very own specialty coffee farm in Panama for as little as $15,000. Here's how it works. Deeded half-acre parcels entitled Specialty Coffee Farms in Boquete, Panama are turnkey managed professionally on your behalf by a team of local experts. Sustainable average income is estimated at 12% and cash flow can begin within 12 to 15 months from the date of your parcel ownership. International Coffee Farms' mission is to own and operate specialty coffee farms that are economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable. As part of this mission, 20% of the gross profits of each farm is committed to a socially sustainable fund to improve the lives of the Panamanian coffee farm workers and their families. International Coffee Farms currently owns and operates nine specialty coffee farms with half-acre parcels available for immediate ownership. To find out how you can become a coffee farm owner in Paquete, Panama, email coffee at realestateguysradio.com. That's coffee at realestateguysradio.com. Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Homebuyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. Perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Worldwide demand is making coconuts one of the highest yielding cash crops available today. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and many high net worth individuals have invested billions of dollars into coconuts for strong growth and solid long-term income. Yields could be as high as 18% or more per year. Capital appreciation and exceptional income for up to 60 long years could be an absolutely brilliant investment to pass on to future generations. For more information, qualified accredited investors should email coconuts at realestateguysradio.com. Diversify wisely with direct ownership of fully managed coconuts on prime farmland close to the beautiful Costa Rican border. Email coconuts at realestateguysradio.com. This announcement does not constitute either an offer to sell securities or a solicitation of an offer to purchase. Offering made by prospectus only. For more information, email coconuts at realestateguysradio.com. 
this is Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Have fun. You'll learn something. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. You've picked a good one. It's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. Lots of great questions to come. In the meantime, it's time for us to ask you a question. Real estate trivia is upon us. And in just a minute, you'll hear the question that has something to do with real estate, of course, and your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to fire off an email to trivia at realestateguysradio.com with your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address, so that if you're the winner, we can send you a copy of Passionistas, Tips, Tales, and Tweetables from Women Pursuing Their Dreams, a great book. You're going to love it. All you have to do is answer today's real estate trivia question. Last week on The Real Estate Guys, we were talking about private money, and here was our question. Name the largest U.S. bank by total assets. Well, number two was Bank of America, number three, Wells Fargo, and the answer, number one, J.P. Morgan Chase. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. TripAdvisor just came up with its list of best fine dining restaurants in the world. What city boasts the number one restaurant? Yep, what big piece of real estate? It's actually not that big. There's a hint. What city boasts the number one restaurant in the world, according to the readers of TripAdvisor? If you think you know or just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address so we can send you a copy of Passionistas, Tips, Tales, and Tweetables from Women Pursuing Their Dreams. If you're the first one with the right answer, that book will be yours. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking about the things on your mind. It's Ask the Guys. If you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com. Click Ask the Guys. And then like magic, it comes to us. We obviously cannot answer questions one-on-one, nor can we answer every question we get. But we do try to answer as many that uh, that make sense that uh, we think lots of people can benefit from. This one comes from Charles in North Palm Beach, Florida. Hey guys, love the show. I currently own a handful of small apartment buildings and a mixed-use building with no mortgage. I'm currently planning to purchase a larger 15 to 20 unit building when I find a deal and would like to cash out refinance my mixed-use building, but I'm a little worried about ending up in a 2008 type issue when there's no money available to refinance since terms on commercial loans are usually 5 or 10 years, not 25 or 30. How can you make sure that there will be money available to refinance 10 years down the road when the balloon is due? Also... How have you found your best deals? Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the question. Uh, Those are two different things, and we'll talk about them both. The first is, you're right, most commercial loans, once you get out of residential one to four loans, most commercial loans are generally bigger minimum size loans, and they have very different terms, such as a fixed term of five or 10 years, and no ability to change that. So very common in residential real estate that when the rates change, I can refinance, pretty easy to pay off my own loan, maybe a prepayment for the first couple of years, but I can pay that off and get a new loan. Don't assume you can do that in commercial. If it's a five-year loan with a balloon, that just means that all of your payments over the five years aren't paying off the entire loan. It's not fully amortized. There's something left when the loan is done. And it's hard to go out and get your crystal ball and figure out 10 years from now or five years from now what the market's going to be like. So the first thing is there is nothing you can do to completely ensure there will be a loan available in five or 10 years. So there just isn't. However, that doesn't mean you're lost in the woods because, as you've heard already, and if you listen to the show, we're big, big fans of private capital. Lots of private lenders, lots of ways to raise capital and equity. So I wouldn't be paranoid. I wouldn't not take a loan in the commercial sphere because there might not be a loan available. But we saw that happen in 2008. I mean, you're right. In 2008, if your balloon was coming due and you had to refinance in late 2008, the technical term is, I think, you were foobard. <laughs> you were messed up. It was a big problem. There was not, an, and, and we saw lots of people lose properties because of that. So not to make light of it, it's serious. But I, again, Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Ways to think about it before the time is due. Yeah, absolutely. So so in order to really take advantage of private capital, you have to, first of all, have a real deal. So the most important thing you can do is make sure you have a strong operating property, that it is generating good cash flow. Because cash flow, is the price you pay to get uh, your hands on capital. Somebody's going to have capital, they're going to want to yield. Now, in an environment where they know they are the only game in town, you may have to pay a bit for it, but it's better than losing the property. Uh, You know, one of the concerns is that you would be underwater. 
So make sure that on your balance sheet, you maybe have the ability to cross collateralize. See, you can be a lot more flexible with a private lender. So if someone comes in and says, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to loan you a certain amount of capital uh, at a certain yield. In other words, you're going to pay me a certain amount of cash flow that's going to come off from the building. Happy to do that. The challenge is if for some reason you fail to perform, there's not enough equity in the building to make that worth my risk. But if you would pledge me some additional equity from someplace else, then and then I'd be willing to do the deal. So if you are willing to look outside of the conventional financing box, there's always going to be people that have capital. There's always going to be people that need yield. You just need to make sure you have a real deal where you have good, solid operating cash flows and you have some strength on your balance sheet so that you can perhaps pledge additional collateral to secure that lender uh, if that's what you end up having to do. The other thing is you don't wait till the very end of the loan term. I mean, if it's a five-year balloon, right, and, you know, four years in, you start looking for sure. And again, there's a concept not to get too uh, over everybody's head, but it's a pretty simple concept. Lenders refer to it as defeasance or yield maintenance clause. And what those things are on a loan is it's this. The lender is putting the money out there for, say, in our example, five years. They're expecting to make a certain return having their money work for five years. They don't want you to pay it back in three years. So there is a big, what we would call maybe in the residential world, a prepayment penalty and it can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. But as you get closer to the due date, that amount comes down. So if I'm one year left in my loan and I start looking, it might make sense to pay a little defeasance in order to get a surer loan for the next five years or 10 years or maybe even longer period of time after you've owned it for a while. So don't wait. Don't stick your head in the sand when you got a balloon coming due. Start early to make sure that you can get out of it. Well, and there's one other thing too, because if you're if you're faced with losing the building, you could syndicate part of the building. And instead of taking on a lender, you take on a partner and they come in and you're going to get diluted, right? You're going to have to sell them their shares cheaper if the property's gone down in value. But still, if it's a good operating property, and they are bullish in the long term. And most of these financial crises, when credit markets seize up, they seize up temporarily. Now, it can take weeks, it can take months, some some cases it can take years. But the difference is when you've got an equity partner, you've got someone who's on the same side of the fence as you and not somebody who is breathing down your throat to foreclose. So there's, again, a lot of escape routes and it's good. You're very, very wise to be thinking about this at the front end of it. But to your point, Robert, I don't know that I would sit out. You don't make any money sitting out of markets, and you there's always the potential for an atomic bomb to go off in the future. You just never know. But if again, if you're doing solid business, you've got a solid property and solid cash flows, then you're usually going to have something of value to offer either to an equity partner or to a lender, and there will always be people out there willing to step into one of those two shoes if you are building your brand and your network. Be proactive. Don't be paranoid. Now, the second part of your question, how we found our best deals, that's a pretty easy answer through relationships. 100% through relationships. Build your brand, build your network. I think I've, we've said that before. Every fabulous deal we've done has been brought to us by someone we know well, who knows us well, who believes in us and vice versa. And there's a trust factor and you have a reputation and that's how deals get done. They don't get done in the traditional scouring the newspaper, looking on LoopNet. I mean, you can find deals those ways, and we certainly have. But your specific question, how have we found our best deals? People we know who know we're in the business. Those are usually brokers, principals, people that understand exactly what we're looking for, and that takes some time. We talk a lot about personal investment philosophy, that you're getting clear about who you are as an investor. When it comes to deals, it's such a time saver. When I am crystal clear on what I want, I mean, you've said 15 to 20 unit building. When you're crystal clear on that and deals come across your desk, pretty easy to look at a deal and say, is, it a is this a 15 or 20 unit building? Right. No, it's 700 units, not interested. It's two units, not interested. That's just a small part of your investment philosophy. But the clearer you are, the easier it is. Now, the next step, and here's where the rubber meets the road, is making sure that the people in your world, the people in that network you're building, know what a good deal looks like for you. So they bring you that stuff. That's the secret. Get into great deals. Get on the short list of the great brokers. You can't do that first day out of the gate. You got to build a reputation over time. It's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. Lots of great questions today. We'll have more when we return. This is the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. 
Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from November 10th to the 13th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 10 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful. The people are wonderful and wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2016 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed. And this year is looking even better. How does that translate to real estate investment? Well, that's what you have to come see. There are all types of opportunities in Belize when it comes to real estate investing, including both long-term and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law, property rights are strong, and contracts are written in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me November 10th through 13th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet local providers that will help educate you about the market so you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. That ball is always in your court. You'll receive their contact details, but they won't receive yours unless you give it to them. You've heard about Belize and the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, these trips are small and we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trips. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, November 10th through 13th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities, and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Kevin Harrington, an original shark from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. If you haven't yet reserved your cabin for the 2018 Investor Summit at Sea, it is time to do that. Get to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click the button that says Summit. Speaking of Summit, this question comes from Marianne Lacey in Newburyport, Massachusetts. She says, hey, I couldn't find the report Prepare by Chris Martinson that you mentioned on the recent podcast. Well, Chris Martinson, uh, of course, will be on the Investor Summit at Sea. Very excited to have Chris and Adam back with us. Uh, it's not a report. It's a book they wrote called Prosper. It's a book you could find in our recommended reading list. I think what, Marianne, um, you're referring to is we did a specialty call. We did a conference call with Brian London and Chris Martinson specifically about a major announcement, what we think is a major announcement, where China is proposing to deal in oil trade using a gold-backed currency, their yuan, backed by gold. So any gold-backed currency interjected into a system that is worldwide all fiat, meaning it's not backed by anything, uh, has a the opportunity to be a game changer. So we got Chris on who understands energy and pays attention to economics and gold, and then Brian London. And at the end of that, we talked about what can you do to prepare? And we said, if you would send an email to prepare at realestateguysradio.com, we'd send you a bunch of different information. And usually we put our stuff, the special reports on our special report page, but this was unique. This was specific to that call. So um, it may be that's what you're referring to. So prepare at realestateguysradio.com. You have to send an email to that address and you'll get all the information. All right. This next question comes from Bob in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Hey guys, my wife and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary in June of 2018. Well, awesome. Congratulations. We're curious as to how far out you have dates for the Belize Discovery trip scheduled as we're wanting to include such a trip as part of our anniversary vacation. All right. Well, I think a great 30th anniversary trip would be to Belize. Uh, we don't have the dates, but uh, we do schedule them out several months in advance. So I would say if there's going to be a trip in the June time frame, probably we'll have that on our site by uh, March or April. So check back with us. Well, again, same thing. You go to realestateguysradio.com, click on events, find the Belize trips. If there's not a trip listed or you can't make the date listed, just click on the get on the advance notice list. And as soon as a date is announced, you'll be among the first to know. This next question comes from Daniel in Livermore, California. 
California. Hi, real estate guys. I've been a long-time listener to your show has inspired and educated me to take action on the property I own. My question is this. Can I use money other than cash and savings to make upgrades and add an addition onto my house? I have a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA both. My goal is to maximize my tax deductions and not use my cash and savings. Thank you in advance for considering my question and thanks for the great show. All right, Daniel. Well, we're not tax advisors, but our understanding is unfortunately no. No, no way. Never. When it comes to your retirement funds, there's lots you can do, but one of the prohibited transactions is your own personal residence. The basic rule of thumb is that that you are being given a tax break by the government for your future and a future benefit that you qualify for after you reach a certain age. And that's 59 and a half is when you can begin to enjoy the benefits of your retirement. Uh, So if you were to use anything for current benefit, you violated the terms of the deal, blown the tax break, and in fact, end up suffering a penalty. So again, not a CPA, not a lawyer, you got to check, but our, our understanding, and I think it's a pretty good understanding, is that you, you, you can't use that money for that purpose. Nothing that you're going to get a current benefit from. It can only benefit you after you've reached the uh, retirement age. All right. We have a bunch of more questions, but only time for one more. This comes from Lou in Rancho Palo Verdes, California. He says, do you know of anyone that has purchased the training for the Residential Assisted Living Academy? And have you heard about the practical real world successes that they have had? Thank you. Well, you've probably heard us interview Gene Garino on our program. He's the founder of the RAL Academy, and he teaches folks how to do residential assisted living. I've been to a training that Gene has done. Russ has been to the two-day training more than once. We have dozens of people in our world that have not only taken the class, but done something with it. What's exciting for us about the class, it has nothing to do with us. Gene is a third-party vendor that teaches this course. He knows a ton about it. The course includes a tour of many of his own properties. But what we love is our motto, education for effective action. That's exactly what we see people doing in residential assisted living. Yeah, I, I've been to the course a couple times. I've had many friends and family members go. We recommend it heartily uh, to all of our audience. And we know many, many people, to Robert's point, that have taken the training training and gone out and done it. And the thing that's great about Gene is Gene isn't just a teacher, he's a doer. He actually practices what he preaches. And so you get a chance uh, to actually tour his properties, meet his staff, see what he's doing. He's got all kinds of support programs on the back end. You don't need to do that. You know, you can go off and just take the course and go from there on your own. But if you need a little bit more hand-holding and support, he's got those services available. So if you're serious about being in the space, any space, this space or any other space, it's always important to have a mentor, somebody who can help you. If you don't have somebody in your world who's experienced, then hire somebody to be that person. And that's what Gene can do. Gene can teach you. Gene can help support you, mentor you. So I I highly recommend it. Just go to our website at realestateguysradio.com. Look under resources, the resource network. You will find information about Gene Garino and the Residential Assisted Living Academy. Thanks to our amazing listeners and all these great questions. If you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, you can go to the website at realestateguysradio.com. Click Ask the Guys and that question will come to us. We'll do another show in a few weeks because we didn't get to some really good questions. We just ran out of time so we'll get to some of those and maybe some new questions that come in coming up soon it is our annual tradition halloween horror stories a great show of terrible things that went wrong but the excellent lessons you can learn be listening for that until next week go out and make some equity happen this episode of the real estate guys radio show is brought to you by paradigm life powerful cash management strategies using life insurance learn more at beyourbank.com Mid South Home Buyers, Low Cost, Turnkey Cash Flow Properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, Asset Protection Strategies for Real Estate Investors from Attorney and Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.